I've been asked over the last couple of days, Randall, is there an update to the fig orchard? Well, here we are. It's Saturday morning, July 1st, and it's getting hot, but we're gonna give you an update. And we're also, towards the end of the video, gonna go through each variety that we have and wanna show you plant by plant. So if you're interested in what plants we're growing, stay tuned. All right, it's already in the 80s with about 80% humidity out here. It's getting hot and I wanted to come out early this morning and film this tour with you guys and show you what we're growing, talk about the figs a little bit. Now, we just recently bought this property back in the early spring and in February, we planted this orchard out. In late March, we had a late uh, freeze of 27 degrees come through. And I have a video where we went through and we showed the results after we've covered it up the, night, the morning after the freeze had passed and we uncovered everything. I only ended up losing one tree, BB10, and that's because it was just a little rooted cutting like this to begin with. And uh, we ended up losing that, but that's the only one that I lost. All the other figs were covered and are doing okay. Now, some people have asked me, Randall, where did you get all your fig collection from? Well, I've been collecting figs for several years now. And the little backstory of it all was after I retired out of the military, I uh, was sitting at work one day and I remembered, uh, man, there was a big purple fig like this when I was walking the dirt streets in the markets of Egypt. And um, I was like, so I just Google searched, you know, big, large fig, Egypt. And I, I love figs because we grow up, my grandmother had a big, huge tree and me and my cousins used to climb up in it all the time and eat the figs and figs is something i knew that i really enjoyed and it was a black you know, a brown turkey fig so during my search for the figs i found out that there's a forum called uh, figs for fun yeah i think that's it it's retired now and so i got on that site and started reading a little bit and come to find out there's this whole underground world of people who collect figs and there are all these different varieties and all these different taste varieties that they were explaining. And I was like, that's really interesting. That's, you know, I love plants, I'm a plant guy. And that's something that I wanna start doing is getting into figs. So I started off my collection. I went online, started collecting cuttings. People were saying, hey, if you come up and visit, I'll give you some, you know, some of these trees. And back then, seven, eight years ago, it's probably eight years ago now, um, there was a huge community that were just swapping figs, whether it be cuttings or plants. And now that we have fig bid and you can go on there and you can purchase your figs. And um, that's another avenue for collecting figs. So that's how I got into figs. So I've been collecting a few here and there. And then we, we bought this house, bought this property. And then ever since I've started uh, expanding a little more, but we bought this property this year. And so I got really heavy into collecting figs and I really started ramping up. Last fall in 2021, I went through and I started buying cuttings and started buying plants. And I just started putting the money into having a, a collection. So that's how I got started. So everything that you see out here is only one or two year old uh, rooted cuttings or air layers or something like that. So these are all young trees. And I'm continuing to add, I've got one, two, three, four, five rows with 15 plants in each row. I've got enough to do another row and I'm not gonna hit those varieties today of what I'm gonna be putting in that, that sixth row. But with an acre and a half, I've got a lot of room for expansion. I could add another couple hundred figs if I really wanted to squeeze them in here. My objective is if I could get just a hundred figs of good varieties and uh, I think I would be happy with that. So starting out right here, I've got Galatia Negra, and that was the very first fig tree that I put in ground here in the orchard, and I just went down the road that way. If you're curious to watch the video, there's a link to it, and uh, you can go over there and you can watch me plant all these out, and then the upgrade or the update after the hard freeze. All right, so, we're gonna take you through and we're gonna talk about each one of these plants 
and I'm going to show you how they're doing and we're going to um, just do a quick overview. All right, so the first one's Glacia Negra and I don't have any figs on this one yet. I keep looking in here expecting it to start uh, putting on figs, but I'm just not seeing any figs, but I'm having some plants come on down here and I might be able to take air layers or cuttings from that one. So Galatia Negra, overall the tree's looking good, but um, I'm ready for some figs. This one is Yolo Bypass. Yolo Bypass has got a couple of figs right there. And that's about the only thing that this tree is doing. But it's a good looking tree. <clears throat> Peter's Honey. It's got some figs coming on there. Now, one thing I want to talk about is you see that these plants are all mulched and I've got grass coming up in here. This mulch is to take care of this grass, but some of it's just a little too stubborn. But I got a nice, probably there was initially about a two inch layer here and then it's all kind of settled down. Got some ants in there. But mulch is really good for suppressing weeds and retaining moisture. This is Stella. Stella also has zero figs on it so far. But I love the shape of those, those uh, finger shaped uh, leaves that are on it. Those are really pretty. Now, I noticed that when we got some rains here recently, all the figs really started putting on a lot of growth. And there's Nordland. Looks like we got Nordland starting to turn ripe right there. But when we started getting a lot of rains, these are all fertilized around the tree. And when we started getting rain, I noticed that we were starting to get a good amount of growth coming along these trees. And the secret to fast growing is not only fertilizer, but proper moisture. Now, if you look down that fence row over there, in order to run water from the house over there out to this orchard, I'm gonna be looking at about 300 foot of pipe. And I don't wanna just lay it on the ground and let it get run over and uh, end up breaking. I wanna be able to put that in ground. So that's gonna be a future project is running water out here. And then maybe next summer, I can have these things watered on a regular schedule and uh, help grow these trees a little bit faster. So Negra de Agde, got a couple of figs on it overall. Trees putting on some nice growth, looking good. Here's one that's been that put on a lot of growth real quick for me. It's doing really good. And uh, Nuesta Senora del Carmen. I got a little fig right there behind that tag. I didn't even know that was there. So I might be able to sample a little flavor of that. But that was a little bitty cutting back in the spring and that's put on a lot of growth. One of my favorites, Smith. And uh, Smith seems to do pretty good. I know it's cold sensitive, so we went and bought Texas BA1. I bought that one while I was at Edibles Landscaping up in Virginia. Brought that one back with me and it's growing pretty good. And look at here guys, I've got a Smith that's starting to turn ripe. I've got two Smith trees. It's the only tree that I have doubles of. That one's starting to soften up. I've got something out here that ate one of my, ate several of my figs just overnight last night. I've got to figure out what it is. I may even come back out here and, and bag these to keep, uh, to discourage something from eating my figs. But July 1st is when we typically get our first ripe fig in this area. Cold de Dom Noir. I've got some figs in there. Nice tall plant. There's some figs hiding right in there. It's looking good. That Col de Dom Noir is a good looking tree. Been doing really well for us. 
This one, not so much. This is called a Dom Blanc. It's got some figs coming on, but I can't get this thing to green up. I've given it the same fertilized regimen as all my others, which is, you know, I hit it with a little bit of everything. Um, fish emulsion, triple 13 fertilizer around the base, a little bit of lime. I've done miracle Grow, and uh, maybe next year, once it gets established, maybe it'll start growing a little more. Coldedon Ramada. Now this is the prettiest fig that I have in my collection. Look at those stripes on that fig. Isn't that pretty? That is a good looking ornamental fig. And I've never tasted Coldedon Ramada, but I understand it's a really good tasting fig too. And I'm excited to try this one. Let's see if I can get it to focus. There we go absolutely beautiful i'm excited to try that one a little small tree but uh it's got a fair amount of a fair amount of figs on it for the size so i'm excited to try that one this was lsu purple lsu purple always seems to grow really well anybody that i ever see a, that has an lsu purple they seem to have no problems with it good looking plant this is another LSU variety. This is DC6 Dead Cat series. And I had some Baribas. Now last year when this tree was in a pot, absolutely loaded up with Baribas. Oh, I got a fig right there. There's one. So we'll get a main, well, at least one main crop off of this one. But DC6 loaded up with the Baribas last year. I had four or five on it this year too. So I'm liking that I get it early. If you don't know what a bariba means, that's a fig that grows on last year's wood and you typically get it ahead of your main crop. It typically does not as good as the main crop, but at least you get some figs. This one's another one, another uh, variety. This is St. Gabriel. Yeah, I've got a few figs on it right in there. See, those are hiding pretty well in there. Now I got this one protected. My beehives are right there. So that one's doing good. This is another LSU variety. If you can't tell, I put all my LSU varieties kind of in one general area. This is uh, Scott's Yellow. That was an air layer, a rooted cutting that I did last year. And I just planted it out here probably about mm, six weeks ago. And for six weeks of growth, it's, uh, it's starting to grow really fast. That's a good growing fig. This is another LSU variety. This is gold. And that one is starting to turn right there. It's starting to get that light green on it, especially when you compare it to something that's not light green yet. So it won't be long, we'll have an LSU gold fig. I've got a spot designated right there. That's where LSU champagne is gonna go. I took an air layer off of my tree that's in my, my front orchard out by the highway. And uh, I've got it ad adjusting in a pot to get rid of the shock. It's in a shade, it's well watered. Once it gets through the shock of taking that air layer, we're gonna put it out right there. Now this is a very prolific fig, Scott's Black. And this tree is doing so well. And there's a ton of figs in there. Just everywhere you look, there's figs all up and down. See if I can get on this side. Maybe the sun, I'm not filming into the sun. Oh, shoot, Scott's Black doing good. I think this is gonna be a good tree for us as far as how it grows. The only question uh, that I have on it is some people end up losing this in a cold snap. So, um, but uh, LSU varieties are known to always come back from the roots. So as long as we connect, uh, protect that root ball during the winter, we should always have growth come back. Now this one is Black Madeira. Black Madeira is a slow grower, especially since it, it's usually plagued with so many diseases. 
uh, it doesn't grow too fast. Some people have tried to clean this one up in tissue culture and uh, maybe maybe they haven't given up on that yet. Maybe we'll end up getting a cleaned up variety that uh, grows better than this. Some people end up uh, grafting over uh, black Madeira onto a rootstock. But black Madeira is known to be the best tasting fig out of all the varieties. That's the hype. Whether it's true or not, that depends on the person that's eating the fig. We've got a couple there. We should be able to, uh, to taste this fig this year. This was, uh, this was supposed to have been a black Madeira tissue culture, um, but it turned out to be there was a mix up at the tissue culture lab. And that is not a black Madeira. So they, people have identified it as Tenya, I think. So um, we don't really know what that is. Figo Preto, oh, that's another black Madeira variety and uh, it's struggling, guys. It's not looking good at all. I really want Figo Preto in my collection, but uh, as long as it hangs in there, I'm not gonna give up on it, but that wood right there looks a little diseased. So this may end up succumbing. If it doesn't put up another shoot, I may have to replace that one. I like to get a matte black Madeira KK and um, have that in my collection. That's a black Madeira that tends to grow a little bit faster, a little bit better. All right, this one right here, BI39. This is another Italian variety, Mount Etna type. It's got some figs on it. I've been wanting to add this one to my collection for years, but I finally got one last year at the Fig Swap in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Olympian, Olympian. I believe is a tissue culture uh, fig. You can usually get these at the big box stores around here. Most everybody's starting to carry Olympian. Valet de Bordeaux, some little figs right there. All that growth right there is come on since the rain. So you see all that growth is within the last two weeks probably. It has really put on a good shoot of growth. And I will probably end up trimming that off and using that as the main, the main tree. <clears throat> this one, this is Patsy's Pride. I got this one from Mike's, from uh, Mike. Mike goes by Figs in GA, and uh, he's a local to this area. And uh, this is one, one out of his collection. It's an unknown. I tasted this at a fig event last year, and uh, this is a really good fig, and uh, it's growing good. There's a lot of figs on it. This is gonna be a good one. De La Gloria has got a lean to it. You'd think it would be from, the, from Italy since it's looking like the leaning tower of Pisa over here. I tried to stand it up. It doesn't wanna stand up. There's too much pressure. I'm not exactly sure what happened there, but De La Gloria yeah, we're going to get to sample it this year, but putting on some vertical growth. If I could select one of those to be the main trunk for next year, we may end up air layering this whole section out into different plants. Yellow long neck, big, long necked yellow fig. Uh, got this one last year at the fig swap in Chattanooga and uh, it's growing pretty good. Now, I think I've got a rabbit in the orchard, guys. I got the Dr. Gawati fig here. And over the last day or two, something has just been mutilating this Dr. Gawati. I'm gonna probably have to get out here. I may have some lead deficient rabbits and they may need an injection. I don't be playing around with stuff eating my crops. That one right there behind it though. That one looks good. I'm excited about this fig. I've never tried it before, but uh, that's, that's looking good. Now here's another Israel variety. That one's an Israel variety. This is an Israel variety. This is a red. As you can see, there's some reddish colored figs on it. 
right there. And uh, there's actually quite a few figs down in there. Growing good. All right, what do we have here? This is a Croatian fig from my friend David the Good. If you don't know who he is, he has a YouTube channel. He's a pretty good size following. He lives just down the road from me. And uh, he's probably one of my best friends that I've got. And we love to sit around and talk about plants. And uh, somebody had given this to him and he said it was a Croatian fig. It was an unknown. And I asked him if I could have an air layer of it. So I don't know if this is Croatian dark, the variety itself, but uh, I'm gonna to attempt to identify it later. I think it's probably a known variety. I just need to, need to identify it, but it's doing good. Figure de Solis. Doing good, it's got some nice figs growing on it down there. Yeah, it's looking good. Good upright tree. Got a shoot there. So, yeah, looking good. Colonel Littman's Black Cross. I've had this one for at least two years now, and I've never had a fruit on it. It's never formed a fruit. I was hoping that this year would be the year. It doesn't look like it. I don't think I'm going to get a fig off of this one, but it was such a good grower for me. I was able to do several air layers off of this tree last year and the air layers have performed well but no figs thermalito doing all right late in the year for uh onset but it looks like i got some figs that might be trying to form in the leaf node right there Now, I got this one from MJ Figs last year. This is Esquisito. And he was wanting to know how Esquisito was doing the other day. And I had to come out here and look and lay eyes on it. But Esquisito hasn't put on a lot of growth. I blame that on me. I don't properly irrigate. If I properly irrigated these figs, they'd probably do a lot better. But it's got quite a few figs on it for the size. So I think this is gonna be a good one as far as production. If we can just uh, water it and get it to grow. And I've seen other people's videos and this has been a good grower for others. So we need to figure it out. We need to get this one going. Now here's one that is plagued. Creme de Frag Fragola. And look, it's just ate up with mosaic virus. Just every leaf is twisted and turned and it's nasty looking. Now, if I was going to select one for tissue culture cleanup, this would be the one that I would end up cleaning up simply because it's just so beat back. I may end up having to replace that and just get a better, uh, less disease on that. I've been trying to feed it and get it to outgrow the virus like a lot of people have done, but it just seems to just be crinkling up. So we're going to give that one some time and see what happens with it. Now guys, this one right here has been a rock star for me this year. This, uh, look at all that growth. All that growth is this year's growth. Look at all those figs in there. I'm not going to tell you the variety just yet. But this is the only one that I've got that has red stems. And the figs have a red tint. To them also. Look how beautiful. It's going to be an absolutely beautiful variety. This is cherry cordial. I didn't know how cherry cordial was going to do, but I'm really shocked at how well this one is performing. This one does have some cherry notes to it, I've been told. I'm excited to try it. Cherry Cordial. It's doing good for us so far. I can't wait till those mature. Bergen Unknown. 
This grew really well for me last year. This year has been kind of slow. It loaded with fruits last year. This year, I don't see any fruits. I've got hopes in this one though. This is a caramel type of a, a fig. I enjoyed it. Now look at here guys. This is probably one of the top ranked figs. Del San Wami Grand. This is a good one. It's known within the community as being a really good tasty fig and uh, it's loaded up. I say we should be able to sample it this year. Starting to get some growth there on top. It was a slow, slow to go, but it set fruit really quick. Nebo, Nebo good, grow really good for, grew really good for me last year. This year, again, not so much, no figs. Oh, there's one, one fig on Nebo. Not too excited about the taste of this one, but this one's gonna be a workhorse. This one's gonna produce a lot. I just know it just because of how it performed for me last year in pot. Give it a year in the ground, get established. I think this one's gonna be good. All right, another LSU variety because we're right back down here at the end of this row again. This is LSU Thibodeau. One big fig. And it was shipped to me like that from Cajun B, my friend over there and uh had I already had a fig on it i couldn't bring myself to take the fig off to grow the plant up hopefully it'll put on some growth after that fig comes off but it shouldn't be much longer that fig should be ripening up chicago hardy planted that as a rooted cutting that was doing good marseille black vs a lot of people don't know how to say marseille they want to say marcellus but when you go to France, there's a town in the French Riviera and it's called Marseille and it is spelt the exact same way that this fig is spelt. And that's how you say it, Marseille. Um, Red Lebanese, Baca Valley. Got some figs, got some growth. Nothing really to talk about there. This is my wife's favorite, St. Rita. St. Rita's doing good. Got some growth, got some figs. She loves this one. She is excited to taste this one again this year. That's another one that I got from my friend Cajun B, Brian. Black Sadar couple of figs and eh, growth let's put some growth on but it's not it's not killing it some figs on this this is Adelio's purple I was shocked I have to say Adelio's purple was my favorite fig last year out of everything that I sampled in my orchard this is a Mount Etna type this is like a Chicago Hardy but it's earlier than a Chicago Hardy but this is a good fig it loads up, it grows good, solid tree. Nothing to actually just rave about because you know it's a Chicago hardy variety, but I like it. Campaneri, no figs. It needs some, uh, it needs to put on some growth. I-258, I had this one in pot a couple of years before I planted it in ground this year but a slow grower, it's got some figs on it. Can't wait for that one to get established. That's another really good fig among the community. Barbantine, man, look at Barbantine. Barbantine just loaded up with figs. Decent growth, but a nice crop of figs on that one. Dark variety, this would be a really good one. Not tasted it yet. Most of these out here I've not tasted. Uh, Lampira Prush. I got this one as a cutting, rooted it, planted it out this year. I did taste it last year. It's okay. It's a good fig. Tasted it while it was in a pot. Of course, they when you taste them in a pot, they're just not as good as a, what they have to be in ground. Now here's one that's probably my best grower. 
in my whole entire orchard. And this is an unknown variety out of California called Sunrise. Sunrise grows really good. And it loads up with figs. I tasted it in the, while it was in the pot last year. And, uh, you know, it's not a, a mind-blowing experience, but that may end up being a good workhorse fig. Honey plum. Honey plum is just now starting to put on some growth. It was struggling all year this year. We've got some rain, got a little bit of growth there. It may take a while to get honey plum established and growing good. Alma. Alma's another good grower. Produces plenty of good amber colored fruits. This is a uh, drap de or. Got a little fig on it down there. Little plant. I need to trim around it, get that grass away from it. It's starting to grow a little bit, but it's struggling. Here's my smallest fig I have in my collection. This was a struggling uh, cutting. Sister Madeline's dark. And uh, I keep pouring the fertilizer to it. I don't know. I got another one up there. I may end up having to replace it if it succumbs, but we'll see. Give it time. Give it time. Rockaway Green. Another cutting that I got last year. No figs. Ashia Green. Got some figs on it. I also got this from Edible Landscaping last year when I was up there. It's grown good this year. White Madeira number one. It's supposed to be a really good green fig with red interior. I'm excited about that one. It's grown decent for me. And it's got a good little crop of figs coming on. All right, starting on the last row, we got Paradiso Bronze VS. A couple of figs on it. Looking good. This is a uh, male fig. This is striped, butler striped capra fig. And I'm gonna use the pollen off of these figs to pollinate my other figs in future, uh, maybe next year or something, whenever I can get the timing right. And when you pollinate the figs, they take on a completely different taste and it's supposed to make it more enhanced. So I'm excited about taking the pollen from my, from my male capra fig and seeing what that does for me. <clears throat> right here is a G. Neary. I've actually got an air layer set on G. Neary. I'm taking it to a, a fig swap. Some ants down in there. But look at those roots. Get that. Those roots are looking good. Got some ants going on down in there. But uh, it's time to take that air layer off. I'll just go behind it there with some snips, snip that off, and I got a whole new plant that I can take and uh, can trade with. This one's actually going to Mr. Milton. <clears throat> He's hosting the fig event up in Watkinsville, Georgia. And uh, this is going to be one that I'm just going to give him. He's asked for it, and so I'm going gift to gift that one to him. Now, yesterday when I came out, my figs are starting to turn on this Marseille white. That one was turning. And I had one right up here. And I had a third one over here somewhere. Today they're gone. So I've got something in the middle of the night because I was there yesterday afternoon right before dark and this morning first thing I walk out those figs are gone so something in the middle of the night took those figs so two things have got to happen either I got to bag them or I've got lead deficient animals that need a lead injection and so I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet but I'm probably going to come out here with a flashlight at night and see what's going on I know I've got a rabbit the rabbit has not eaten 
or bothered any of my fig trees, but I always see these little uh, pools of uh, rabbit poop next to the trees. So I know he's out here, I've seen him. He's been over in my garden and uh, he's never bothered anything, but it's kind of hard for me to think that he would get those figs up top. I may have a possum that's in the area, a possum or a raccoon or something getting that. This is a lemon fig. This is a good growing fig. It's similar to the Marseille white. That's why I, I planted it close so that I can compare the two. I don't think they're the same. I think they're two completely different trees based off of a leaf pattern so far this year, but we'll see. Angelique, I got this one from Mr. Larry Stevenson when I went up there for, to do the interview of the apple orchard that he's growing. He sells Angelique and he told me that this is the one of the one that came from Thomas Jefferson's um, estate. Madeline de, de, de du Saison. Yeah, de du Saison. So you got some little figs there. I gotta get out here with a weed and take care of these weeds. They're starting to come up through my mulch. That'll take away nutrition, that takes away moisture. So they get that under control. Bataglia green. Looking good. No figs. I got a snail right there. I've not really ever noticed any snail damage, but I just leave them alone if they're not bothering. But once they become a nuisance, then I have to get rid of them. Martinica, the miner. Started this one as a cutting last year. Good, good growth on it this year. I don't see any figs on it yet though. And we're not too late. If it, we had some figs coming on, we still got time to mature those out. That's California brown turkey. Got that as a cutting last year. So um, we're still, let's see. All of July, August, September, October. We're still four months from our first frost. So we've still got time to mature out figs if they start putting figs on right now. Melazania Calbri, Calbris. I got a little funny story about this one. I had it up front by the road in my, my front orchard and uh, it died to the ground. It never came back. It was dead and uh, it went several months like that. I took a shovel and I put something in its place and I threw this one in the bucket that I transplanted the other one from. And through the bucket behind my shed, well it rained for three days straight and uh, about a month later it started growing. So I threw a little potting soil on it and it started doing really good in the potting soil. And so this year I figured I'd plant it back out and it's done pretty good for me so far. I don't know what happened. Did I put something on it up there that caused it to not grow up there? That it does grow here? No idea, but round two. <clears throat> now this one, let me find a tag. I guess I haven't put a metal tag on this one yet, so I'll reach down here to the blue tag. Now this is one that was given to me this year and we had a homesteaders event and I was teaching a grafting class and a guy was walking across the, uh, the parking area out there and he said, um, I said, sir, stop, you've got figs. He goes, yeah. He goes, I was bringing these for somebody else. I says, what is it? He says, it's an unknown, it's not a brown turkey, it's not a Celeste. It comes from the Panama City area from an old tree that's like a hundred years old. And he doesn't know what it is. So I just put a label on it and I said, Panama City Unknown. He gave me one of the uh, one of the trees. And so there it is. And it looks like a Mount Etna type based on the shape of the leaf. And uh, we're gonna see how it does for us 
no idea. So curious. Just put this one in the ground. Just ordered it. Just put it in the ground this year. So this is a new one for me this year. Col de Dom Roja. Since I put it in the ground, it's already got a little bit of growth. This has been in the ground about six weeks. This one's went in the ground at the same time. It's a little bit slower grow. And this is Col de Dom Catat. Last fig in the ground this year. Well, for now. I've got more that I want to put in the ground later. This is another one I got from my friend Cajun B. Brian has hooked me up with Black Celeste. And there is a uh, fig at every node, every leaf node has a fig coming out. And I am excited about having this fig. I can't wait to taste this one. If you haven't looked up, know anything about Celeste, look at the picture on this one. This one's a black uh, exterior with a deep purple interior. And it looks great and people have raved about it. And I believe um, Ross the Fig Boss said this is probably in his top 10 right here. If not his top three is what I've been told. All right, so. Uh, rooster over there it's gonna crow while I'm trying to tell you guys about these figs but um this is something that I built and I want to show it to you on my way to show you the the final figs over there my little front orchard but I took these uh, four by eight uh, box and I put goat wire goat wire has four by four squares and if you buy a four by four tree pot container for your figs your container will fit down in the wire. This is where I put my cuttings to establish in my shade under my pecan trees. And uh, they get, as the sun moves throughout the day, they'll get a little bit of sun on them. They're not um, completely overwhelmed by the 100 degree heat. And I just checked, it's 88 degrees. Temperature out here right now, heat index is 100. And uh, it's getting hot and it's getting muggy. We're going to go to my mom's later and sell, start celebrating 4th of July. And we're having fireworks tonight here where I'm at. But I just want to stop and show you these, so you guys how I'm holding my tree pots up while they get established. All those back there, those are apples. I got an angel trumpet in there, but I've got some figs that are growing right there. Now for my round pots, whenever I go on vacation, I was worried about watering them so i put them my round pots in a little kiddie pool and then i can water them and they're not sitting in water but if i'm going to be gone for a day or two i can put a little bit of water in the bottom just kind of so they wick up but not stay drenched but these in here these are looking good these are varieties that i'm going to be putting in ground varieties i'm going to be trading so this is what um, this is my little propagation area. I got a little scotch yellow. That thing looks good right there. Look, it's got little figs on it. All kinds of, you know, several scotch yellows that are in there. De La Gloria. That thing's looking good. I'm going to be trading that one. And there's another one of those little Panama City purples that I was just showing you. Over here, my shell apples looking good. And I just bought these trees. There's a fig collector that's local to me down in Gulf Breeze, Florida. She's downsizing her collection and she had some for sale. So I picked up Socorro Black, Martineca Ramada, and Col de Dom Gris. And I got those for $50 a piece. Not bad for a nice, big, large, established plant like that. I feel like I got a good deal. And I appreciate the good deal on those. I ended up with another Violet Day Bordeaux by mistake. We're going to take that one back and we're going to trade it for another variety. All right, let's get to the front orchard and give you an update on those figs up uh, there. Okay, so this is our property line. This is a fence. That house is going to someone who's going to be moving in over there. So we put up a fence. Uh, fences make good neighbors. This is uh, figs I put in the ground about six years ago. This died all the way to the ground this year. You can see how much growth I got on this LSU Champagne. 
it's looking good. It's got figs on it, but I got plenty of material that I could take air layers. I've got some air layers set on it, but I can take plenty of cuttings this year and start rooting these out. I'm a nursery now, so I can start propagating to sell and shipping. And uh, this is one of the plants that I'm gonna be heavily pop propagating from. Look at the size of that leaf right there. Absolutely huge leaf. It's probably pulling a lot of nutrients from my garden beds that are right over there. This is an unknown. This is Scotch yellow that died all the way back to the ground this year from the hard freeze that we had. Got down 17 degrees for four days here and it killed all these figs to the ground. And that was before I put my other figs that I was just showing you in the ground. We had that hard freeze. Scotch yellow has grown back, got plenty of figs on it. My auroric did not survive. I'm going to have to get a replacement um, and uh, replace the auroric there. Same place I got that one from, I'm going to go back, I'm getting another one from. This is the only one that survived the freeze. And I'll give you a second to guess what it is. And I'm starting to get some good figs on it. I don't know if you can see because of the sun, but it's got good growth. It got hit by the, the freeze a little bit. I don't think it was all the way dormant whenever the freeze hit. So I've got some top damage, but it didn't get knocked all the way to the ground. Got some air layers set right there and propagating that limb. This is uh, Chicago Hardy or Hardy Chicago, however you want to say it. Um, this is a really good fig. Good tasting fig, solid producer, good grower, reliable and it's reliable down to uh, cold, to cold uh, places. And uh, I don't know if you can tell, but right in the top up there, it's got some figs at every node. And this produced a lot of figs for us last year. We're taking all these fig trees that are in this row, and I'm gonna put copies of them out in our big orchard back there. And I don't know whether we're gonna take and just propagate this for the nursery, or if we're actually gonna take these trees out of here. Not sure how that's gonna play out yet. Danny's Delight, loaded up with figs. These are some good looking plants. All, got killed all the way to the ground. I got several air layers on them right there. Gonna take them to the fig swap. Alma, lots of growth, lots of shoots, lots of figs. This is Dominique Italian. I got a couple of air layers set on it. It's putting on a nice crop of figs. Good growth. Just put this one in the ground last year. This one is Ponte Teresa. Ponte Teresa. So it's just getting established. My chickens keep getting around the base and scratching out my mulch. So I'm having to keep coming back here, but it is something better, keep that mulch a little bit better. Lebanese yellow, got some figs on it. Looking good, this is a nice big yellow fig. It's a good tasting fig, nice big finger leaves on it. This is Adelio's purple. This was uh, another one of those workhorse figs. Loads up, grows good, solid, solid tree. Colonel Littman's black died all the way to the ground from the freeze. It came back, that's how much it's grown this year. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed this fig tour. And uh, if nothing else, it was just a little bit of entertainment for you. And I hope you picked up a little nugget of knowledge along the way. Hope you enjoy the video. I invite you to hit the like button, hit the subscribe button if you're not already a subscriber. Remember, keep growing. Keep building and always keep adventuring together. We're Flamington Famous. We'll see you next time.